You are now locked into the Express Truth Show. Presented by Mark Hamilton and Sapa Devine. Real talk, real action. Good night, good day, shalom, balance, paradise to all the siblings. Trustfully, everyone had a, a, a wonderful week and they are enjoying the, their, uh, their day. We have another special guest on today, a return guest, uh, Mark Sargent, who came on and pretty much blew a lot of people's minds uh, to a different concept and way of thinking in regards to this planet that we live on, this Earth. Is it a globe or is it flat? Uh, today we're, we're just basically we're going to go through a little bit more information, have an update, um, and go through some other interesting news that we've um, that are surrounding the flat Earth and try and just get a little bit more detail. So I've got obviously Mark uh, Prime Minister on, and I've got Mark Sargent on. Yeah, most definitely, man. We're back again. We want to welcome Mark. Other artifact that could be out there, be it the Holy Grail, the Ring of Power, uh, the Spear of Destiny. If there's an object like that out there and, and it has some sort of magical properties or proof of the divine, proof of God, you're never going to see it if science gets to it first because they, they can't allow it to happen because it's going to undo the institution that they were, they were um, building for all these years, which is where we are now. And that is, this is the question I put out to everybody. I go, look, science has told you that it's a globe. They've been telling you this for a long time now, but they've only put a picture up since 1972. If they were wrong about this, would they go back on their beliefs? No, they wouldn't. So the question is now, can you prove it's a globe? And nobody to this day, I've done uh, on my show, I think I've had 17 or 18 testimony experts, subject matter experts, everybody from all members of the armed forces to engineers to flight instructors, everybody from – everyone from in the air, pilots, all the way down to the ground, people that build things and use a lot of geometry in doing it, and nobody – I mean, not only has not, have none of those testimonies recanted on their testimonies, but they've all uh, complimented each other and says, yeah, they're, they're all building off each other and said, yeah, all the instruments that we use show us it's not a globe. It's flat. And there's something wrong with the world. And they're not telling this. And that's where, you know, 18 months after we started this thing and, and now it's just gotten bigger and bigger to where, uh, you know, it's 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 crazy. It's becoming it's we're, we're past the stage of of absolutely condemning it to where now it's this heated debate and uh, i can't wait to see where it goes from here that's yeah, my rant definitely. yeah no, and rant's not at all far from it <laughs> far from <laughs> it you put that very well for the um for people who didn't know um that is a that was an excellent sort of taster and a, an overview of exactly where we are now yeah. um in regards to understanding and trying to find out as you say is it flat is it a globe? How do we prove it? Um, we discussed historically, obviously, the reasons why um, potentially people would, you know, the powers that be would try and hide said information. Um, now, the, the the breaking news. Let's get into that. The, the, the breaking news that you um, that you sent me in regards to the the, uh, the tenor mm -hmm. um, and the the admission um, all over social media. Um, Instagram, I believe, was there some Facebook Facebook posts? Oh yeah, yeah. He was uh, yeah. He's been posting it everywhere. So in essence, um, I mean, I think you've obviously got a little bit more detail, but um, I'll give um, if you want an overview. Um, a, a, a tenor from Canada um, has, has been basically it's clearly a, a quote unquote flat earther, and has become more and more vocal. Um, in regards to his views, and I've been posting Facebook pictures and sort of long, inform well, uh, textual information uh, stating, you know, and asking the question: Is it is this Earth flat or is it a globe? Yeah. Um, and that's getting a lot of traction in mainstream media now. 
Oh yeah, yeah. It, well, the story came out yesterday, and it's it. Well, because he was Canadian, it hit all the Canadian press first. But then Billboard magazine picked it up. You know, that's a, a big American periodical that uh, covers the music industry. And mm-hmm. what's interesting is is that he doesn't get the attention necessarily. He yeah, the the flat the flat Earth aspect because he is a flat earther. They're not condemning him. Because he's the flat earther, what happened was, uh, you know, there's been some real or not shootings in the United States recently. And Mm -hmm. there was um, uh, a group called uh, Black Lives Matter that was basically, you know, trying to stop, you know, anti-black crime or uh, anti-black events. And he comes out and does a uh, a little statement during a national anthem of a night of a United States baseball game down in San Diego, where he changed the lyrics to the Canadian national anthem and actually put in his own words to the the, the fact that all lives matter, not not just yes. black lives. And it was really interesting because that I mean that drew a whole bunch of attention. Once one he did it on national television. Uh, two, you know, it's kind of an international thing because he's changing a yes. national anthem. And but so. then they they start trying to tear him down. I don't know who came up with the story first because the Canadian press really didn't jump on it right away. And then all of a sudden says, oh, yeah, by the way, he's all he not only is he insane, he's also a flat <laughs> earther. And they re, and, he, and and the Billboard article really went into, into detail about, you know, all the different things that he did as far yeah. as posting and his girlfriend's still backing him. You know, a uh, fairly famous girl, and I can't remember her name. Uh, let's see. One second here. His girlfriend is named... Crap. Oh, uh, Shemaine... His ex, I'm sorry, ex-girlfriend. Well, she's still backing him. Shemaine McAuliffe. She, she's going, oh, yeah, he's the greatest guy ever. You know, he's, he's a vegan, and he's super peaceful, and he's all about peace and love and, and brotherhood. And it's just really, really interesting. I mean, this just came out. I've, I've been kind of waiting for the third celebrity. You know, there's an old military saying, which is the, the first time you see it, it's happened since. The second time is coincidence. And the third time is enemy action. And mm. when B.O.B. came out, that was kind of like the second one. Because Tila Tequila, I'll count her, is kind of like the first one. And so yes. I've been kind of I've been kind of waiting for the third celebrity to come out. And this one, you know, is about as high profile as it gets in in this particular genre. You know, he's a he's a singer, part of a longtime group. He's not a flash in the pan. He's won awards. He's sung with us about everybody in the music industry. And he's come out and 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 yeah, he's 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 focusing on the uh, on the shooting incidents. But the the flat earth stuff. Stuff is really, really coming out. I, I love it. I, I think it's, I think it's great. And again, it'll, it'll do nothing but help the, uh, the, the metrics and the demographics. How, how do you think we can move forward? I mean, because we ain't got nothing really concrete to kind of say that. I mean, it is or it isn't. It's so hard. Well, I mean, because now that I've been watching a lot of your channel as well, and a lot of stuff since we done the last show and. They're even saying things like the the people that claim to have been into space haven't actually yeah. been into space. It's actually like Hollywood productions and like they make these people look like astronauts and they're not really in. They're not really on the moon because I'm just thinking yeah. that's the only way we don't know whether it's flat or round. That's the only way to know whether we was actually up there looking down. And most, I mean, let's be honest, ninety nine point nine percent of us. I never actually gonna go up there, but watching a lot of the stuff on YouTube, they're saying that, in fact, nobody's been up there. Is this true or false? Nobody. Yeah, as far as I can tell, and and it's kind of gone along with what I what I would do if I was gonna try to, because this was something that I was looking into a year ago, which was, look, if I was going to let's say hide the world or hide the the true nature or the shape of the world, how would I do it? And the first thing you'd want to do is lock down space. You know, or lock down the the uh, the, the skies. Uh, by that I mean militarize it. So the last thing you would ever want to do is put astronauts on top of, of rockets, which are basically just giant piles of liquid liquid explosives. You set that thing on fire and and fire it off in the sky. Even if you were going to put it at a shallow trajectory and and then parachute them off into the oceans, 
it's still way too risky. So no, no, you wouldn't ever, ever want to put an astronaut in actually a capsule and send them up. If you're Because if you're going to fake part of it, you're going to fake all of it. And by that, I mean, it's just as easy to send up an empty capsule and then put a capsule with astronauts in it and drop them out of the back of a plane with a, you know, with a parachute and you'll land them in the water. Of course, they don't land them in the water anymore. They land them in a field in the middle of Russia nowadays, you know, because it's easier to control the airspace. You don't have to worry about boats and, and everybody trying to figure out where these things are going to land because it's, it's tougher to, to control the water space. Which is why the uh, the Challenger disaster, the United States Challenger disaster of 1986, where supposedly seven astronauts died, if anyone's old enough to remember that, and now you look up, yes. you know, you could look, you could look this up online any day you want. It's called, you know, look up Challenger astronauts still alive, where mm -hmm. these guys, you know, they they somebody figured out, okay, what would they look like, you know, and where let's, you know, with all the database we have access to now, and <clears throat> six of se six out of seven of them, they actually found. They're actually walking around. They're professors. Yes. They're usually they're high profile people. And what was interesting about that was they were they had really distinctive faces. So mm -hmm. these weren't like you know really you're looking at their faces and you're going well it might be him it might not be him. You're looking at your faces going wow some of the the eye characteristics and the lips and the cheeks they they it looks just like them and it would make sense because you know if they uh if the capsule exploded well technically they're dead. But you got to do something with them. You're not going to kill them, are you? I mean, you could, I suppose, but why waste, you know, talent like that? So you keep them around in the program, do other things, put them in a witness relocation program, and that's it. And who, who would know? In 1986, nobody knew it was going to get to the point where you could find these people out. And, mm. you know, here we are 30 years later, and we did. Definitely. I mean, I, I've um, before I even found uh, or stumbled across the flat Earth uh, information, going back, I don't know, maybe eight plus years, I've seen multiple um, documentaries um, in regards to the the moon landings and, like, for instance, did we did we actually did we fly to the moon? I think was was one of the documentaries, and it goes in and shows you actual footage of of them faking the, the, the that initial so-called moon landing um, yeah. then you look at the photographic evidence um, with the lighting etc there's been um, so sort of, it's in history channels sort of um, documentaries to say actually no there is some there is some strange stuff that took place but this is how we can counteract this information because this is this is fully explainable type thing um, where in all actuality when you examine the evidence you know uh, they were far behind. America was so far behind the, the space race. Oh, and yeah. All of a sudden, them to yeah. uh, land. It's just, it just does not oh, make yeah. sense. And, and yeah, and then the Russians quit. I mean, there's two aspects to the to the Apollo landing, which really bugged me. And I'm so, actually, I'm so grateful that the flat Earth thing came into my focus because the, the moon landing bugged me. And it was like an itch I couldn't scratch because uh, from, a, from an American standpoint, it was like, okay, so why do you fake the moon landing? It wasn't a question of if it was faked. It was why. Because, it would, you know, you look mm -hmm. at all the photographic stuff. I mean, the shadows intersecting and, the, and the, there's yes. no dust on the lander. And how did, exactly. they get the, how did they get the moon buggies up there and all this yep. other crap? I mean, it was, it was not well thought out in the long term. But it bugged me because going, why would you fake it? Why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, fine. You, you put an American flag up there. Rah, rah. Go team. But it doesn't. It, it's like it's good, but it's not great. And then when this came out, I go, oh, it makes it, it completely synced up with me at that point because I go, oh, it's not you wanted to, to fake the moon landing. You had to. If you do not fake the moon landing, if the Americans don't do it or the Soviets don't do it, whoever whoever it is, if you don't do it, eventually the private sector is going to get involved. You know, uh, there's some big, big companies over here, big weapons companies, military companies like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and General Dynamics. These are all subcontractors to NASA, and they have the full capability of, of creating some of these rockets that could go up you know, pretty high. And you don't want that to happen. So you take it over from a government standpoint. You know, NASA is a military organization. Anyone thinks I'm kidding, you know, look it up. They're part of the, the DOD Department of Defense structure. And you control it. And, of course, then there's the the other plot holes which bug me, which was 
like once the Americans got up there, even though, like you said, you know, the Russians were so far ahead of them, right? The Russians had were, were leaps and bounds ahead of them. And we've got, you know, mm-hmm. Werner von Braun and some of the other guys saying, oh, yeah, it's going to take a while to catch these guys. And then not only did we catch them and pass them, but once we got on the moon, once we landed on the moon, everybody else quit. It's, it's, I, yeah. I've never seen anything like it. It's like a marathon race where every you know, oh, the first guy crossed the finish line. Up, oh, might as well just stop, <laughs> stop running, just pack it up, just shut it all down. It's like, what are you talking about? It, that's that's when the real fun begins because you think that at that point it's like, okay, then the Russians show up and they put people on, right? And then you go. Well, the Americans have three people, the Russians have four, and then you, you get this cold war in space, and, and the Americans have a base, and the Russians have a base, but they figured out early, it's like, nah, we can't fake this anymore. We're, we're just gonna, we're gonna cut our losses, we're just gonna do this, the Russians are just, and we just won't talk about it. And, and, and as every, it's just gotten more and more ridiculous, and the public has been distracted to where, even though, because back in the day, remember, it was only the Soviet Union in the United States. And now you've got the European Space Agency, the Jacks of the Japan Agency, Chinese, the Indian. They've all Mm -hmm. supposedly got space programs. The Chinese supposedly have a rover up on the moon right now. It's been there since 2013, supposedly. Do they they, they roll it into the Sea of Tranquility? I mean, talk about a perfect, perfect, I mean, iconic shot of a Chinese rover pulling up next to the American flag and accidentally knocking it over. Oh, exactly. There's a brand new space race <laughs> for you. And nobody, it's it's never ever going to happen. And yet the Americans are still kicking the can, the Mars can down the road. The Orion program they keep yes. saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna keep we're gonna go to Mars." You know, and then two years later they say saying, "Oh yeah, we're still thinking about going to Mars." It's like really, you're not going to Mars. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I'm going off on a rant, but I gotta I gotta make this point, which is they're not going to Mars for a very very simple reason, which is. It is too hard to fake. And I wasn't kidding when I said that if, if a government agent came to me, let's say I was an agent, and somebody came to me and said, oh, yeah, Mark, you're in charge of the uh, the fake Mars program. Here's an unlimited budget, and you have access to any Hollywood technology and directors and special effects guys you could ever want. Go do it. I'd say you are high on drugs. There's no way I'm touching this with a 10-foot pole. And they say, why not? And I'm going, are you kidding <laughs> We, uh, how could I fake this? I go, you can't make a $200 million movie and not screw up because, <laughs> because, mo- because there's the reason why there's things like moviemistakes.com and moviebloopers.com. The reason why every movie's got bloopers in it is because Hollywood movies are shot out of sequence. Meaning if you have a whole yes. bunch of things, you're going to be shot in the desert. You shoot them all at the same time to save money and you, it's everything shot out of sequence. And eventually somebody's going to figure that out. And you can't do it. One one wrong move in the wrong in the Mars mission, it's on the internet forever. You're not gonna be able to erase it, and that's it. You're you're done. It it's it would not. So it, it, the, anyone that was thinking about doing the Mars mission would be scared to death, which is why they've delayed it so long. We should have had a Mars mission by long, by now. Somebody should have done a Mars mission by now. And all they can do is say, oh yeah, we've got a rover up there. Uh, it's still running, even though uh, the battery should have died technically seven years ago. It's still running. We're we're, mm. we're driving around. They're just going to let that thing go. It's like a TV series that will not end. Uh, sorry, it just drives me nuts every time I go down. So, Evan, Evan, you watch The Martian, then you don't think that's pretty accurate? Oh, oh don't get me started on that movie. Because I watched that, oh. I watched that recently on the plane, and I was thinking, I mean, it looks pretty good, but I mean, what do you think? Uh, it's, it was. It was horrible from from a standpoint. OK, first off, it won awards, which I knew it would, because any space movie is going to win awards now because they want to reinforce space. But it's also uh, with the part that really got me where I was just throwing stuff at the television screen was because I watched it at home. I wasn't going to go to the theater for this one <laughs> yeah. was that he was saved by a it was a clever piece of reinforcement he was saved by the remnants of the actual mars rover so the mars rover which had been buried apparently years earlier he dug up and took pieces of that and that's how he got out of there and that right there was a great little link because yeah it's a science fiction movie but you're kind of tying it in to current events. It's like, oh, well, we've got a Mars rover up there. And see, it was useful, honey. I'm glad we spent our tax dollars on it. <laughs> that was it, – it, it, you know, it was like voted like best comedy in some cases. Going, It was not a comedy movie. You guys are stretching. It was mm. like it was nominated for best picture. I was going, that's a bunch of crap. 
Uh, it is a remake of a, of a, a movie. You know, there was a couple of movies that came out about 15 years ago. One was uh, Mission to Mars, and the other one was yes. called the Red the Red Planet, because okay. Hollywood does everything in twos. And I believe this one was done off of Mission to Mars, where um, Don Cheadle, the actor, Don Cheadle, yeah, was that was an excellent so- movie. Yeah, yeah, where he was, remember, he was stuck on Mars and nobody knew it. He had lived there for like the last year, built a greenhouse and the whole nine yards yes. and kept the oxygen going. And all they did was they took Don Cheadle's role in that, reprised it, put Matt Damon on there, and basically told the first part of that story that you didn't see back in the original uh, Mission to Mars. And that, that was the movie. It wasn't, it wasn't even close to an original uh, idea. It was a remake of a, of a movie that was only 10, 15 years earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, that movie drove me nuts. But, the, but I knew what they were doing because once I knew it was started getting nominated for awards, that's when I, that's when I look at it and going, oh, okay, I see what you're doing here. You're going you're gonna to reinforce this thing any chance you can anything that you can get i mean look look at neil degrasse tyson recently he's been in three hollywood movies this year most i've if most in his career um and they're and they're not small movies either here either he did zoolander 2 yeah he was he was literally not only was he in like three big scenes in zoolander he was literally the last frame when the movie ended was was him he did a voiceover in the new ice age movie which just came out and he also played himself in uh, superman versus batman I mean, these are not small little bit part, you know, things. These are big productions. And why is Neil deGrasse Tyson in there? Because they're 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 desperate. They're reinforcing space whenever they can, and they're putting out their poster boy on a regular basis. So what about all right then? So what about Gravity? Oh, the original movie uh, with uh, with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> yeah, Sandra. That was that was. I will say this because I did see that in the theater, and uh, I it I saw it in 3D. It was beautiful. And it was a great reinforcement tool where you could intersplice some of those scenes with real, well, <laughs> what they're passing off as real NASA footage. I mean, it was that that cleanly done. And if anything, it shows you how how easy it is to fake stuff. People say, oh, no, no, you can't fake NASA footage. And so now we're coming back, people in the flat Earth thing, and we're saying, really, have you seen Gravity? Because Gravity pr- pretty much showed you what can be done on, in film right now. It was nearly flawless. It's probably my second favorite uh, cinema cinematic uh, attempt at what you could do in space next to, of course, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was shot in 1968. And it actually looked, the thing about Gravity, it actually looked like somebody had bought the cameras and went into space. Yeah. It never looked yeah. like it didn't look like um, like it was um, what's the word um, done by computer computer no, CGI. no. CGI. Was, yeah CGI it was, that's it yeah it was some of the finest green screen work I've ever seen um, as a matter of fact it's better in my opinion it is better than most of the NASA footage that they put out there that's how good it is and again it's it's just a reinforcement tool uh, when people what I've been saying you know since the beginning which is why my first clue was called the empty theater which is all these movies all they do is reinforce the earth um, they're, they're, the subtext is it doesn't matter if you buy into the story or not if you buy into the mission to Mars or red planet or Interstellar, or Gravity, or any of these other movies. It doesn't matter if you actually like or don't like the movie. All they care about is if you watch it with some interest, you're saying, mm-hmm. I'm watching a movie about space, and I'm on a globe. Yes. That's mm-hmm. all it is. It's it's a constant drumbeat of that. And so that when you see a NASA thing, which is part of the reason why they, I think they, they spend so little money on the NASA productions, is that they don't they can get away with it because <laughs> the movies reinforce the movies fill in the gaps. Yes. So, <laughs> is uh, NASA, NASA's acronym? Is that I've heard um, the acronym is never a straight answer. Yeah. Is that indeed, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a good one. My my favorites, even though they're darker, are from the uh, Challenger disaster because th- those came out about thirty years ago, which was uh, need need another seven astronauts, or oh, uh, wow. not, or or not all shuttles arrive, and wow. you know, stuff stuff like that. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of acronyms for NASA. <laughs> it's 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 uh, and that isn't that that's all ta- that was um, taxpayers' money and that funded NASA. If I'm 
correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. They gave them – here's another thing about NASA that really bugs me. I know people say, oh, you flat earthers, you, you go after NASA, go so hard. That's I'm just going, that's because all roads lead back to NASA, and that's where the money is. Uh, the mm. United States United States Congress approved them last year. The, the budget for 2016 is, I think, $18 billion? You know, pushing twenty billion dollars, and it's like, wait a minute, what do you mean twenty billion dollars? You're not, you shut down the space shuttle program years ago. Yeah, uh, exactly. you're sub subcon- you're subcontracting out work to SpaceX and Virgin Galactic. What, what mm-hmm. exactly is the twenty billion dollars doing? Uh, you know, you're you've got astronauts. Remember Scott Kelly, uh, uh, that one of the bald twin astronauts. He had spent like a year in space. A lot of people don't know. After he came down from that year in space, he quit two days later. He just just resigned from NASA. He wasn't that old. Wow. It's like you think you know when you quit. You're what, was he going to do a book tour? Nope. Do you see him on the news very much? Nope. No. He was. You know, but he was the guy. I'll, I'll give you another one. Because I, people will say, uh, you know, you, you also harp on the pictures too much. You know, like the um, uh, from 1972 up until summer of last year, there was only literally one picture of the Earth from space that was ever released. That was the Apollo 17 one. And then in 2015, they released this second blue marble shot. And do you know who wrote the press briefing? You know, because the White House tweeted it and NASA tweeted it, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Do you know who wrote the, the press release for that? Scott Kelly. Of all things, it's like why is why is Scott Kelly writing the White House press briefing for the yeah. new marble shot? It's like why 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 is that happening? Because he's an astronaut. That's why. Because he, he supposedly wrote it from the space station. Really? Because that's all he's got. He's, he he does White House press briefings now. For, that's that's. Uh, sorry, NASA just drives me insane. Uh, the stuff and every it used to be when we first started this thing last year. Uh, it used to be that they'd run reinforcement stories mm, every t- three weeks, roughly. And then it became every two weeks and every week. And now it's pretty much every day. You cannot go on at least an American website, American news site like CNN and Fox and NBC and uh, even Russia Today if you want. And there is always a space story in there now, every single day. And some of them are way bigger than others. Uh, you know, like it's like, oh yeah, you can buy buy land on Mars, or or oh look, we've got a probe that's mm. coming close to Jupiter, or oh look, Pluto is now a thing again, and the you know we found black holes and and gravitational waves, and they just keep going and going and going, mm-hmm. and and uh, it's it kind of helps us in a way because you know they they think that they're they're helping reinforce the globe anymore and i say look all you're doing is is shooting wooden arrows into the flat earth bonfire and just making it big because people will look this stuff up it's it's uh you know youtube and all the other websites that are out there they're they're not shy about for whatever reason they're not curbing it so it's just helping us uh, we've um uh, have you looked at the or have you seen the um tim peak foolishness yes. that's taking place oh yeah yeah is I mean, he still up there technically no i think he's no i think he's down now i'm sure he's been okay. down for maybe a, about a week possibly but yeah. um did you manage to catch any of the like the the, the first live <laughs> so so-called live conference that he did um back to leicester i believe it was leicester or cambridge one of the observatories yeah. and and he had his family there and it was it was on mobile phones strangely enough yeah. Yeah. I've seen <laughs> I saw enough about him. The, the the part that really bugged me about Tim Peake's thing was the very beginning, which was when he got there, you know, because we're, we're big on docking stations, you know, because you have to get up there and you have to dock with the station. Mm-hmm. Right. It didn't even show the docking sequence. It was like, OK, the ship's coming in and they're like, I don't know, five, ten minutes out. And then all of a sudden, well, he's docked. And it's like, yeah. well, well, you're not going to show the docking sequence. And then he goes from. The do- his his you know they open up the hatches and whatever and he goes literally from his docking thing his module to the space module. station yeah. and as soon as he comes in he's in khakis and socks and yes. a polo shirt I'm going yes. wait a minute what about the air pressurization what about this aren't you aren't you taking precautions what about a spacesuit is there going to be any conflict you don't know all of a sudden he's- He's yeah. He's dressed like everybody else, and he and it's like really you you you're just gonna the part. I'm sorry. The the part that um, 
that I'm never going to let these guys down on. It's like, look, why aren't it? Why isn't anybody up there at least wearing shoes? Everybody's in freaking socks. It's, it's like, it's, it's a slippery surface. You're not going to grip, you know, you're not going to grip anything with socks. It's like, I understand you want to be comfortable, but at the very least, he's going to come in, at least make an appearance, come in in a spacesuit, take off the spacesuit, take off your helmet, you know, make a show out of it. No, no, he comes in in khakis and socks and a polo shirt like everybody else and, yeah. you know, starts doing the experiments and then he got caught on the um, on that blue screen thing recently, which yes. is interesting. Uh, you yes, know, when, and that, that was... Uh, when I when I saw that with the George Bush thing, when he was when George Bush was being pushed in a wheelchair in front of that screen, I knew exactly what had happened. I was like, George Bush's people were photographing everything, and they had they their authority superseded the NASA authority, and nobody freaking edited that that clip. They didn't. They missed it. It's like, oh, okay, you know, does George Bush look okay? You know, because are just focused on the ex president. Nobody was looking at that screen behind him and saying mm. what was on it, and there it was. You know, him playing with that stupid green ball that was twirling around his finger. Nobody's nobody's figuring out why. It's like, wait, why is that there? Why is there a a green screen ball in front of a blue screen grid? And I had people coming back saying, no, they don't use blue screen anymore. And I did do research on that. And actually, they do use blue screen nowadays still. Uh, It's usually for night stuff. If you want really, really bright things, or you're doing a lot of daylight CGI, you use green screen. But if you're doing something really dark, uh, you you use blue screen. Blue screen is apparently used all the time. So when they say that you know NASA doesn't use blue screen, it's that's a bunch of crap. Of course they are. And the um, the last thing on that, um, from what I can remember as well, is the the, the blatant use of the wires. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the harnesses. Uh, the harnesses. It, I'm. I'm really surprised that they do the harnesses, to be honest. I, you think if they were going to do – I mean, I know they have to because that's what Hollywood uses. But it's it's tough to do because you, – especially if you're using polo shirts and you're, you're trying yeah. to do it on a budget. And th- it shows up every once in a while. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, the harnesses for me were good. The other one that was good was the, uh, the guy that went back. It was like going out of frame in the back of the ship and he was starting to dissolve. I think David Weiss or one of his friends uh, was the first one to pick it up. So he's turning the corner, and it's cheat. It's something they use in Hollywood every once in a while. And that is to simulate motion or simulate speed. You you want to you want to blur them out of the picture. You know you want to start making them transparent. But they did it too early, and he was he was tra- oh. he was going transparent when he was still halfway out the out the door. I was like, wow. why 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 would you do that? Why would you let that happen? You know, not to mention all the other. I mean, I'm sorry. The ISS is just a mess. I mean, I did a a testimonial with a guy, um, an industrial engineer, who still is going to remain anonymous. But he is he he was the first guy to tell me he's going. Look, there's no way they can do what they what they say they're doing up there, because from an engineering standpoint, there's um there's too many seals and valves and things that are happening up there which have to be maintained and they're not maintaining them. Uh, you know, not not to mention the heating and cooling system, the air filtration system, the scrubbers. Mm-hmm. That that shouldn't be possible. Uh, there's so many little things about the ISS technically that that just can't that can't happen. But all the and you throw in the people stuff that's happening, that's ridiculous. Uh, the the motion, the motion stuff that's happening. You know, like again, the the, the women's permed hair is still my <laughs> my all times favorite because because it just. I'm sorry. But it's a rookie mistake, which is, it look, is. if you if you want to if you want the women, you don't want to show any gravity shifting and you and the women's hair is going to is going to show that really easy because women's hair floats like anything. It's like mm-hmm. in a swimming pool. I go, you there's three things you can do. One, you could pull the hair back, put it in a little thing behind them Two, put a hat on them. You know, yes. why aren't these people wearing NASA hats all the time? It's free advertising, for God's sakes. Or three. Uh, I don't know, cut your hair really, really short. It's like nobody should have hair at all up there because it's a zero-G environment. Hair is going to get in the scrubbers. Hair is going to get in people's mouths. Hair is going to collect everywhere. You should never, I mean, you should never have any hair. You should be wearing like a skull cap. And instead, no, (laughs) their idea is let's take hairspray and put their hair straight up. And that's, that's what, you know, and, 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 it's not going to move at all. It's going to bounce, <laughs> like, run into things. Let's just bounce the hair around. Oh, just 
It just drove me. And first, I mean, that was that was the that's all I needed to see. Not to mention the other little things like them simulating. What was it? I think it was this year. It's like, oh, how, how we take showers, right? They don't take showers. They take like these sponge baths, and there's water flying everywhere. And there's YouTube guys going, wait a minute, there's an electrical panel like six inches from this guy. Why in the world is he is he like spreading water around next to all these electronics? Uh, and the place is going to get super grungy, and yet nobody cleans yes. anything. Nobody maintains anything they should be they apparently have tons and tons of free time on their hands you know that and 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 people have also made comments about um uh for example like all the stuff they ship up there like the guitar right the guitar like you know how it supposedly costs like ten thousand dollars an ounce to send anything up there and yet they're going to send a full-blown guitar that they're not even going to put together. Or And then another guy, you know, there was another thing where they actually – somebody was dressed in a gorilla suit. I don't know it was for Halloween. It's like how much is the what? cost? I, I, don't look it up. They actually did a skit, like a Benny Hill skit where a guy gets in a gorilla suit and he's chasing people around the space station. <laughs> How is this possible? How is nobody – what, Congress isn't going to ask? That gorilla suit just to ship that thing up there would have cost, I don't know, half a million dollars to send? The suit itself was only worth a 100 bucks. Uh, it's just and, – and yet the American people – I mean most people just believe what uh, – I'm sorry. This, this is kind of a long rant. But the American people believe all this stuff because NASA has been painted as this benign – Star Trek utopia organization. They wear white uniforms. They don't carry guns. They smile for the camera. They're the only military organization, apparently, that doesn't actually, they're not hostile. So it, it, that's, that's, everyone says, oh, well, they're the good guys, obviously. They're like Star Trek. You know, they're, they're, they'd never hurt anybody. They'd never lie to us. And, and that's why it's been bought, you know, for so many years, because it's the one organization that's nobody's ever even raised an eyebrow against, because well, why, why would you? It's, it, you know, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, yeah, oh, they do bad things all the time. They've got covert operations and, and black, you know, black hat type stuff. But NASA, no, they've got nothing to hide. They set rockets up and they take pictures and they come back down. Nobody questions it. Until well, until recently, and now you know that's why we're you know I'm coming after them as as hard as I can, and, and it seems to be working. I mean, at at the very least, we've created some massive reasonable doubt in the the not just the United States program, but all the others, and and other people have said, well, you know, doesn't the European agency and JAXA and all those aren't they separate from NASA? I was going, no, 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 NASA blueprinted all these guys. It you know they were the they whoever was in these countries they came to NASA and they said how do we do a space program and then you know either NASA has to kind of confess to the higher ups or they don't they say okay here's the deal all you know power perceived is power achieved all you have to do is make it look somewhat realistic and people are gonna buy it and so there you have it I mean China and a rover you know 2013 sorry anyway so as as oh, no yeah. as no um government officials come to visit you yet or have anyone been in contact, like as far as no, anyone from NASA or no, any? No, not not yet. Uh, and again, I people say you know there's two ways you could look at that. And people some some people say, well, you've got to be one of them if if nobody's come to you yet. I go, yeah, I suppose you could look at it that way. Except I haven't recanted my statement. In fact, not only have I not recanted, but nobody in the flat Earth movement has officially recanted anything, meaning, you know, anyone that's gone on the flat earth thing and said, you know, publicly or even privately said, look, I'm flat earth. Nobody has turned around and says, you know what? No, I'm not buying it. And statistically, that's amazing because even, you know, your major religions, you're going to like say you're into Scientology. I think like 10 percent or 15 percent of Scientology, you know, they drop out and say, well, I'm not really into that anymore. One guy, and he happens to be from England, um, uh, there was a YouTube guy named Tiger Dan. I don't know what his real name is. Uh, Tiger Dan 925, 325. Tiger Dan. Anyway, you can't miss it if you're on YouTube. He was in Flat Earth for a while, and we think at some point somebody got to him because he was about 30 videos in. He was trying to build out, he was trying to reinvent the map of the, uh, the Flat Earth, and something happened, and he flipped. And he just went completely against the flat Earth thing. But he, but he said, "Okay, I'm going to do a ten-part series against flat Earth." He only made it to five, and then we never heard from him again. He never made another video, and we don't know what happened to him. But he's the only guy that even attempted 
to uh, turn against Flat Earth once so he got into it. we haven't heard from this guy since then? No, no. I mean, his YouTube channel is still up, but he has not made a video. He has not uh, done an audio. He is, And he wasn't shy about being on camera. You know, he put himself on camera, even though he never used his real name. And the guy, Mark, is it the guy with, um, and he used to have like a green background. Green background. I don't know if he was a hat. Yeah, he'd he'd wear a baseball hat. Yeah. You can't miss him. I mean, literally all you do is if you're on YouTube, type in the word Tiger Dan, no spaces, and you'll see it. His channel is still up there. And, And every once in a while you'll see him make comments on other people's videos, but we don't know if it's him. And he keeps saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to make more videos. And it's like, dude, that was like four months ago. And you, he was making videos every week. And then he just completely shut down. And, and he, was a big, he was a big Christian as well. And you would have thought that's how he started out with like Book of Revelations. That Before he was Flat Earth, he was really into that. So you would have thought. I think that I even, it. Yeah, even if he had bailed on Flat Earth, even if he had renounced it, you would have thought he would have at least gone back to his, his standby, which is I, I'll, I'll just go back into Christianity and Revelations. And he didn't. And it's really, really odd. In fact, the last person to talk to him was uh, Patricia Steer on on her show Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. She interviewed him. It was the only time I think he had been interviewed officially. And in fact, he I tried to get him on my show at one point. And he said something really weird in that interview where he said, when I turn against – not if. When I turn against Flat Earth – now, it could have, could have been a slip of the tongue. But he said, when I turn against Flat Earth, uh, uh, then it's probably because I was tortured. It's like, wow, that's really amazing mm-hmm. you would say that. And then two weeks later, or whatever it was, he uh, he turned against Flatter. So do you, do you ever put your image out there, or do you just keep it to audio? No, no, no. I've, I've got – now, Patricia forced me to at some point. Because <laughs> Patricia Steer, oh, yes. She, yes. She, would, she always liked video shows. And I said, man, you do not want to put me on camera. But I said, that's fine. I mean, it wasn't that I wanted to be anonymous. I mean, I put my name, my address, and my phone number. It's just that I didn't think I actually looked that great on camera. So <laughs> when, so no, I was, I'm out there quite a bit. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I had to put pictures out, you know, some still shots for the press stuff. And I think I've done, I don't know, 83, 84 interviews yeah. so far. But I did 20 flat, something flat, shows. Go ahead. Flat Earth Hot Potatoes, is it? Yeah, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with, uh, with yeah, Patricia Steer. I did, I think, 20-something shows with her, and they were all video. Yeah, and they were crazy all... cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she, she was great. I really enjoyed uh, doing the shows with yeah. her. But she's doing her, her own thing now, and uh, uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's still going strong. I think I found that Tiger Dan, uh, uh, Tiger Dan 925. That's it. That's him. Okay. He was and a guy... He was a guy that got into Flat Earth, I think, late last year. And he was a strong Christian. He was kind of like a Rob Skiba, um, uh, you know, because a lot of Christian, a lot of Christians have really latched onto this. I mean, every major religion yeah. has latched onto this in some fashion or another. But he started making a whole bunch of videos, and they were really good. I mean, he, he I don't know if he's got 30,000 followers, but he, he was making some good videos. And, and one of them was 75 Bible verses that prove the Flat Earth. And he, you know, he went through the, the the 75 real strong verses in the King James Bible and really developed some good stuff. And so people, when he turned against it, people were going, OK, smart guy, how are you going to renounce the 75 verses that you already did? And he goes, oh, that'll be my next project, right? Never did it. That's that we know why he, he stopped it when, at five. It's because he he said, well, when I get to seven. I'll do the Bible verses. I'll go against the Bible verses. And people are going, yeah, good luck. And that's when he ran into a brick wall because <clears throat> Christianity has really had a field day with this because they say, look, you know, now that they're now that they're they're taking a deep, hard look into uh, chapter and verse, they're saying, look, it, it really does talk more about it being flat than it being a, a ball. He's calling that. Um, well, sorry, he's rebuking um, Rob Skiba now. He's second to last video. Yeah. I'm just on the um, yeah. channel yeah. now. Yeah, he and that was weird too because I was talking to Rob because when I was trying to figure out what 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 uh, Tiger Dan was doing, I I called up Rob and I said, look, I go, what's um 
uh, I go, have you gotten a hold of him? He goes, we, I, he goes, what do you mean? He goes, he's supposed to be doing a project with me soon. You know, it was supposed to be this Christian collaboration. And I go, well, you're not going to have any collaboration now because he's actually made out a video against you for no apparent reason. And, and that's very anti-Christian anyway. Why, you know, yeah. that's Christian on Christian crime. Why would you do that? You're going against the straightest arrow in the flat earth movement, which is Rob Skiba. Yeah. You know, the guy doesn't even swear on the air ever. No. And he's a nice and guy. <laughs> he's a really nice guy, and and yet you're gonna you're gonna call him out and saying all flat earthers are horrible, but Rob Skeeb is the worst. It's like what? <laughs> Why no, would you? He's a, re- he's a real. For me, I I listen. To, I used to listen to his what is he, re- re- uh, revolutionary broadcast he used to do on Blog Talk, and he was a he's a very um, energetic, open, yeah. research heavy person. I mean, I, I, for someone to attack him and to say he's the worst, I mean, far yeah. from it. He's someone trying to seek the truth. Yeah, and in fact, he was the guy. I'll take credit for this one. He was. I converted him. He was the because he, he he was listening to me on another show, Canary Cry Radio. Yes, and then he calls me up and he goes, he goes, he goes. I'm not buying it. I want you on the show. I go fine. Bring me on the show. So I go on the show, and and by the time we were done, he you could see, you could see his mind was just reeling. He had no <laughs> idea. He's kind of oh man, you know, because when people hear this, some people get kind of disoriented, and then he starts digging into it. And what I think, what a month or two later, he starts you know he starts releasing his own videos, and and uh-huh. he caught a lot of flack for it. But it he's, is, he's, yeah. he's still. In fact, at one point, he had shut down the whole thing. He had shut down his website and because he had caught, you know, crap from his friends because there's, you know, the people are, you know, as you know, people are really harsh about this because the first reaction is always, well, you're crazy if you're into flat earth. And then, you know, but he had so much support, which was great. He got just this, just an incredible amount of emails uh, with love and saying, don't quit, man. You're, you're, you're a positive force here. And now he's back with a vengeance and, you know, making a whole bunch of videos. Now he's intersplicing other things, but, uh, I, I love the work Rob does. So. Definitely. Um, I'm just looked on, um, sorry, no, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to, uh, ask Mark something because I know Mark currently you're in America. So just for our listeners, I just want to know, there's a lot going on in the states right now. We're in we're in the UK, and um, just to come after flat Earth just for a minute, mm-hmm. what is going on over there with this whole shooting of the um the, this Black Lives Matter situation? Because we've had a lot of um, marches here now, and from where you're in the states now, and you can see what's going on firsthand. So, what is exactly yeah. going on? Just for the listeners, as a, an American citizen, from what. From what I can tell, it seems to be kind of a repeat of what they tried to do with Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, that was that was last year, I think, where they seem to be. If you believe in the powers that be, and I, I do, they're trying to create some sort of dissension in the ranks uh, by by create by sort of stirring up with with mob mentality. Um, Kind of like a, a like a like a racial conflict. I won't say a race war, but that's where it seems to be going. So recently, they were supposedly uh, a couple people that were shot by um, law enforcement. I think one at a traffic stop, or maybe both at a traffic stop, and and people in the car were allowed to film it with their camera, you know, with their phones, and they were allowed to release it on YouTube. And then there were people protesting the killing of these guys. And then supposedly um, a black shooter came out and, and during one of these protests in Dallas and started shooting up the place. And, you know, and, and supposedly, supposedly killed five officers. I did a rant on this on my show. Uh, supposedly killed five officers and injured a whole bunch more, even though he was a sniper in an elevated position, but they went down the street and then he was shot a couple times, but he didn't die from that. They, they killed him with a robot that was hooked up with explosives. Uh, and then you tie that with the, uh, the, the gay nightclub shooting, which was statistically impossible where the guy, you know, where I, I, again, another, but they try to t- tie that to a, to an Islamic thing. So it's kind of like what I, what I call it is a kind of like a fear drum beat uh, or a disorientation drum beat where you're trying to cur- give the population less than sure footing to stand on. 
you know, it's like, okay, what's safe? What isn't safe? Who can we trust? You know, who is this person suspicious? And they keep doing this more and more frequently here in the United States, but it doesn't seem to be having the effect that they want. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the United States is so desensitized to violence. Uh, you would have thought that, you know, 50 people dying in a nightclub and another 50 being wounded would would have created more of a furor thing. And yeah, the... I call them I call them regional operations or operations that are they're not necessarily multinational because you guys didn't probably hear about a lot of them. I mean, you probably caught some bits and pieces, but they seem to be meant for us. So like when the um, the gay nightclub shooting happened, I thought that was really interesting because it happened a week before gay pride week. You know, if it happened any later or earlier, it wouldn't have had the same effect. So they seem to be mixing, you know, they, they keep if you believe in like Hollywood and how producers keep convoluting plot lines, that's what it sounds like. Whoever's writing these plot lines, I believe that all of it is staged. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Uh, I don't believe I, I've, I've. It's so hard for me to even find a real shooting nowadays. You know, whether it be Sandy Hook or Boston bombing or, or any of those other fun things. This, everything that's been happening over the last few months, really, really feels even like a desperation. Uh, like they're trying. Like, if you want to start a race war in this country or create some sort of setting for martial law, I mean, yeah, it's like they're they're like they're trying to throw gasoline on a barbecue, and hoping the coals will light, but it's just not happening. And that's that's really what we're running into now. Just a lot of fake events, really small. They're not in the news that long, you know, super high profile for like two or three days, and then they go away. And then another one comes in, and then they go away. The um, the mm. Dallas shooting, it just it just didn't make any damn sense. Uh, you know, if if you're gonna, sorry, if you're gonna go after police police officers, you, you know where where what's the there's there's a lot. Let's put it this way: the night it happened, the the news couldn't even get the story straight. At one point, there were like three shooters. Supposedly yes. kill, killing the police from elevated positions. And then they yes. had a video showing a, a shooter sh- you know, shooting up a cop, even though it is totally illegal to show uh, somebody dying on camera. You're not supposed to show it if somebody, you know, dies on camera. And supposedly this guy's on a, like on the street shooting these guys. So you think, and yeah. it, uh, it was just it was ridiculous. So that's basically what's been happening. A lot of what I consider to be really overt staged events that are designed to keep people in fear and try to create more of a uh, you know give the government more of a chance to do something if the population went down that road i mean yeah if 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 what they wanted was to be more people to get really angry and go out and start shooting people it's just not working nobody's doing it so it's it's these are moves that i i think are are just desperate moves on their part to try to re, re, you know uh, regain more control over the population it's just not happening I would agree with pretty much everything you've said there and um, that was that was pretty much my analogy as well um, just to give a little bit more detail uh, do you think any of these um, uh, African Americans have actually been killed or do you actually think that that element of the of the killings of these males um, is an actual so I don't. Uh, I don't thing. trust. I don't trust it. If that's what you're asking, I don't think they were killed. No, because if they were killed, the last thing you're going to do, if, if, uh, just from the lo- the civil action, from the lawsuit side of it, you're not going to let the girlfriend film it, and then release be allowed. That that phone is never going to leave that car, ever. You are searching that thing. You are grabbing those phones, and and you are taking everything you can out of there because there's a civil lawsuit that's just waiting to happen. Um, no different than – how should I put this? After Sandy Hook, I really couldn't trust almost any shooting after that unless, if it was over a certain number of people. I mean, yeah, you, every once in a while you're going to get one person shot, two people shot you know, somewhere. But once the, the Sandy Hook thing, if people don't remember what that was, you know, where there was a, supposed to be a school <laughs> shooting uh, over here in the yeah. United States where, where 20-something kids got killed. Uh, you know, by a, a lone gunman, even though the uh, the archives, the Internet archives show the school was shut down three years earlier. Uh, but that's not the part that bugged me. The part bugged me because, you know, I'm an American. I, you know, I, I know a lot about guns. 
and I, plus I'm a survivalist, so I really know a lot about guns, was that it had a perfect kill ratio, meaning yeah. it had never happened in a, in a shooting ever, ever, ever in any shooting anywhere, which is a perfect kill ratio and you've had doubts about. You know, you could, I mean, going all the way back to, you know, I've done a whole bunch of rants on my channel recently um, about JFK and Pearl Harbor and every war that's been fought in the United States since the beginning. Uh, you know, pharmaceuticals, it People lie. Yeah. And I, I and I grew up really, really naive. You know, I didn't believe, I mean, I was, talk about your innocent kid. I didn't believe people lied. I, at least people in authority, literally until I was in college, didn't think that people would lie. It's like, what? No, mm -hmm. they're, they're my, they're my parents. They're my politicians. Exactly. They're my, yeah. why, why would they lie to me? And then I saw um, JFK, you know, by Oliver Stone in the theater in the early nineties. And then I realized it's like, oh man. Now I get it. People, mm. people in power will lie to protect their own interests. It's all about, all about protecting your own, and uh, that's that's what we're talking about here. I mean, Sandy Hook, yeah. There's there's inter other interests, whether it's going out against gun rights or going against, uh, you know, uh, the, the lone gunman and you know profiling people or law enforcement procedures uh, to you know if you're going to try to wipe out Islam. You know, there's all sorts of clever ways to do that, and they've been doing a heck of a job recently. I mean, the United States, I don't know what it's like over there, but the United States is severely biased now against everything Islamic because we've been just it's been pounded into our heads since, you know, 9-11. You know, it's Islamic, automatically bad. You know, okay, fine. You have some Islam, Islamic friends? Yeah, fine. It's, but, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it, it's a little dicey. So you think around, Trump around, will become the Western. president? You think Trump will become the president, or what do you think? That's a tough one, because for me, there's still time left on the clock. And by that, I mean I have never seen an election, and I know outside of the United States, people don't care as much, but I have never seen an election where people don't care, not don't care, really don't. It's, it's so polarized, meaning the choices that we have over here now uh, nobody wants either of them, to be honest. I mean, yeah, people will talk about it. It's like, well, you know, it'll be Trump, it'll be Clinton. It's like, look, look at what we've got. You've got a choice between an ex-president's jilted wife or a reality television star. Those are our choices for, for presidency? I mean, Donald Trump is a caricature. I'm sorry, he's a parody of what he used to be. Yeah, Donald Trump in the late 80s, early 90s, that's the Donald Trump you'd want, right? We're not talking about that guy anymore. We're talking about a, a guy that people make fun of. Hillary Clinton? Uh, I'm sorry, since when do presidents' wives get a shot at it's because you know, his, 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 her husband ran for two terms and she, you know, she was an official under Obama? But nobody wants either of them. So what I'm still betting on, I'm betting on the, the third pick, which is something, if, if it was me, you'd want something to happen because most people don't know that the United States president has the power to suspend elections exactly. in times of crisis. So you, you suspend the elections and then people – okay, so you think, okay, fine. Between Trump and Clinton, who do you want? Well, you don't want either of them. you got to pick one, right? Yeah, it's different though if you bring a third person in. It's like, okay, you've got to be between Trump and Clinton and Obama. And he's like, what are you talking about? Obama can't run again. It's like, no, he doesn't have to because if he suspends elections, those two aren't even in the picture anymore. It's just him. And mm -hmm. people say, well, you know, if I had to pick between the three of them, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, I may actually pick Obama again. And mm -hmm. so that's where I – if it was me, that's what I would do. I just – it's hard for me to believe, even though I'm a flat earther, it's hard for me to believe that we're going to come down to that – to the end and it's, we're going to either have a choice between – and I'm not picking my, making fun of women. I love women. But a, a, for the first female president or a reality television star, and it's, 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 it's just staggering to me that those are going to be the choices. But if you if, – if it gets – if it's suspended, that is definitely the choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't make any sense. There's so many better people that you could throw out there, and so now we're now now we're, it's a formality. People are you know they're already talking about who's gonna who's gonna be the running mates and who's who's gonna be this yes. and that. And, and Mark, I don't uh, know if you're familiar with the the, the UK politics, but we've we've just been uh, crowned. Uh, not the right title is obviously, but we've been uh, we've got a new prime minister now. Yeah, I saw that. I saw, you didn't I saw, vote her in. You didn't vote her in. No, no, she just she won it by default. 
By default? You mean no, this nobody is else the system. But there was no... They basically put her up. I mean, this this dovetails perfectly onto what we were just talking about in regards to the, the US politics politics sort of um, plane and the, 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 the three-headed monster that you've just elaborated on. Yeah. We've now had we're in a position where we we haven't even we even we didn't even have a choice. We've now been thrusted in. Okay, well, who's the next person who we actually want? Well, okay, we can see the dynamic over in America. We've he's, we've had a, a black president for two terms. We've now got, uh, as you say, an ex reality star who's good with business, but you know, is a bit of a joke, and uh, he's been pro, pro, promoted as a as a racist and as as, a, as an Islamic phobe. And then we've got a woman. Hmm. Should we actually go forth and bring, uh, as you say, the first woman president to go along with the second female prime minister after Margaret Thatcher? Maybe mm-hmm. so. If not, we will quote, propagate this race war and then, as you say, suspend the election to then grant that power to Mr. Obama. Sure. Sure. I mean, that, that's that's how I would play it if, if I was going to write it at this point. It just seems too... You remember, you got to dumb it down for the lowest common denominator, and the average person is so polarized. It's like you know, if, even if you're Republican, it's like, yeah, Donald Trump, yeah, it's like because you're Republican, you want him, right? But the, the, most Republicans that I know, they're saying, eh, I suppose, but but they absolutely they'll say, but I hate Hillary, you know, and, and the Democrats say, yeah, but I hate Trump, but yeah, that's Obama. If he wanted to do it, you if you want to make a move like that, you'd make. The, the the opposition so leave such a bad taste in your mouth that they wouldn't feel bad about the, the elections be sus, being suspended where the average person be going well could be worse could have been Trump you know and that's what people will that's what people will say quietly because if they were two really really good candidates and I don't know who they would be but let's say they're two really really good candidates then if Obama suspended the election people would look at that and go well it's not fair because we, you know, we we didn't really like his administration, and these two people are really, really good. So the fact that these two people are really, really bad and controversial, it, it's perfect. It's it's. But again, until it happens, it hasn't happened, and I've seen plans fall through before. So I'm kind I'm kind of rooting actually for the suspend suspension of elections at this point. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be an interesting dynamic uh, for the whole of the whole of America, as you say. There's there's three options. They'll 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 create a, a situation where it's a, uh, well, you know, we've got a martial law type scenario going on. It's not going to be safe out there. We'll, we'll sort of suspend the elections. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got the natural person already, chief in command, Mr. Obama. We'll keep him in place. Alternatively, we'll go for a very sort of harsh, hardline um, Trump president who's going to do a lot of a lot of damage to the the uh, to America, or on the flip side, we'll have the first female president. So that's something for the for the for the record books. But then we'll have a a dictatorship, communist regime, <laughs> where you yeah. don't say anything, you you say anything out of place, and you you wind up missing, and nothing yeah. is going to be said. It will be communist China um, part two. Here here's a little wrinkle for you too. You want to believe in in uh, you know. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And that was – people forget you know, the Obama birth certificate issue. Remember that oh, Obama yes. wasn't actually born here, right? People Barry. forget who the, the lead guy was that, that really, really was pushing this thing forward. Trump. You know, that was saying – and that was Trump. It was Donald Trump. He was the one that was saying his birth certificate is not real. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, Donald Trump backs off. Wouldn't that have been interesting if somebody went to him and said, look, all right, here's the deal. You drop this, and we'll give you the chance, the chance, but you got to win legitimately to become president. We'll get you to the primaries. We'll get you to the finals, but you you have to win it on your own, and uh, I think he would have taken it, you know, where, where he's like, yeah, sure, why not? I haven't been doing anything else recently except for my reality shows, so – <laughs> when that and wow. of course at the at the same time the the person that discovered the record you know the the person from the examiner's office or whatever office that was the of records in Hawaii uh the, her plane goes down in the water but it doesn't yes. sink and everybody else survives on that plane but she drowns <laughs> so mm. eh. all right so mark is there any social media or 
any links you want to share with um, our listeners before we end the, the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, of course, uh, uh, like before, enclosedworld.com is still up. I also have a subscription site called marksargent.com. Uh, where I talk about a lot of stuff that we were talking about this evening, not just Flat Earth. Uh, the YouTube channel, Mark K. Sargent is there. You can always just go in any search engine, type in Flat Earth Clues. And I still have a radio show on True Frequency called Strange World. That'll do it. Oh, and a, and a book called Flat Earth Clues and oh. some apps and stuff. You'll, you'll run ah. into all of them. So. You actually, that's actually published now, then, Mark. Yeah, yeah. It was from one of your countrymen. Um uh, a company out of London called Boogles, B O O G L E Z. They called me up, and you know I get calls every once in a while, and people say, "Oh, oh I got yeah, this great idea." And... Yeah, yeah, that was an audio book, wasn't it? Well, it was both. Yeah, it was they, both, they it was reached both... out. They reached out to us after you done the um, the show with us. Oh, cool. Was that them? Yeah, yeah they reached out to us after you done the show. Um, they're from one of them's from Nottingham, isn't it? A I lady. Think so. Yeah, it's a lady. Yeah. yeah, they reached out to us and said. Um, they was putting that together with you. That would be great, actually. I'll actually purchase that. Oh, right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It came, it came out in in March a couple of months ago, and it was uh, it was really it was really I was really excited and really flattered because you know a lot of people will reach out, and, but at the same time she said, oh yeah, we're to- she's a believer, and so she was totally on board and and said we're we're publishing this thing. I was going right on. What do you need from me? And and she goes, just send me your transcripts, and and we'll start. We'll fill in the blanks. And it came out really, really fast. It's on Amazon, so I'm, I'm super happy. A book that I that I have that I didn't even really write. So excellent. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely support that. We'll definitely support that. And uh, yeah, it'd be good to have some actually documented information versus yeah. obviously you know audio. Um, radio shows and obviously YouTube videos, etc. So now that that's an excellent sort of resource tool. Um, but what's the sort of how many pages have we got on that? Uh, I would I don't have a copy in front of me. Uh, less than two hundred. It's a it's a small read, but it's it's easy to get through. Manageable. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's basically the clues in text format with some intro stuff and a big Q and A section in the back, and and uh, it's it's cool. I like it. I was I was happy. Plus. The illustrations are done by a children's author, which is so perfect because it looks it honestly looks like a children's book. I was like, Oh, that's that's fantastic. When if this thing goes big I'm gonna catch a lot of crap for that. So well, great, man, great. So uh, once again, Mark, thanks for coming on to the show, man. It's always a pleasure to have you on and um please stay in touch, man, and we'd love to get you back on again and um keep, uh- update us on what's going on again. Thank you, thank you very, very much for having me. It was, uh, it's always nice to talk to you guys, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you down the road. Definitely, you take care, Mark. All right, peace. All right, peace. talk to you soon, guys. All right. You are now locked into the Express Truth Show, presented by Mark Hamilton and Sapper Divine. Real talk, real action. 